Hello YouTube, this is VidHead85, and welcome to Newsweek on the Internet. Um, I have gotten some, I got three stories for us today. And this first one, the first two are about weddings. A third one is about caretaking. So if you like, um, if you like these kinds of videos and you have stories like this that you would like me to cover, Please put them in the dis or please put them in the comments below. Have a great one and here we go. Family disowns son for being gay, but have a fit when he doesn't invite them to the wedding. When my when my parents found out about my boyfriend when I was 15, they disowned me and kicked me out of the house he wrote. Disown um okay. Disowned even had a cousin who was instructed to stop speaking with me and act like she didn't recognize me when they passed where I was sleeping on a park bench on more than one occasion. Thankfully for Disowned, he worked hard to make it on his own after he adjusted to the idea of someone of myself as someone without a family and managed, through huge effort and the dedication of some social workers, to get back on my feet and make a life for myself. The bright spot in this story is that Disown found a wonderful guy and recently married him in a ceremony with close friends and his family in attendance. No one from my family was invited or informed about the wedding until after the event. Yeah, not inviting his family seems completely reasonable, right? Never underestimate the possibility that weddings will bring out the crazy in a family. Recently disowned was contacted by his cousin, who at least had the grace to apologize for her past behavior and even attended a few family events at her urging. His parents chose to ignore him at those occasions, and his other family members tried to pretend he hadn't been disowned. His aunt and uncle enthusiastically chatted to me and acted as though we just randomly lost contact and nothing weird had happened. I was polite but quickly stopped attending events and shifted to occasionally occasional friendly exchanges online with them. Although no reasonable person would expect this own to invite his parents to his wedding, it turns out that his family isn't made up of reasonable people. I've been bombarded with calls, texts, and messages from my cousin and her parents, all expressing how hurt they are that they received no invite. How could you pretend to have reconnected with us but disown us as your family like this? Is a genuine message I received from my aunt along with who are these strangers you refer to as your parents? Your real parents are humiliated. I refer to my mother-in-law and father-in-law as my family in a post, not as my parents. Unfortunately, these messages had disowned second-guessing himself and wondering if he had been somehow callous in not inviting them after we reconnected. Thankfully, Prudy's guest columnist, the delightful R. Eric Thomas, was on the case to set him straight. Thomas was both blunt and accurate when he told his own that you have not been nasty and if they feel humiliation, it comes from their own aberrant behavior. Yep, that's the truth. And we have to agree with Thomas who argued that disowned needs to not only not feel bad about not inviting them, but he should also consider if he wants to stay in a relationship with these people. I suspect that going back and forth with them will only further hurt you and you will end up being cast as the bad guy as often happens in conflicts with abusive people. Thomas wrote, they're going to keep making you responsible for the guilt they feel. My first thought is that you should cut off all contact and never respond again. Mail to the junk folder, cause block, etc., and definitely block them on social media. Clearly, the story has made the readers as mad as it made us with another writing. They're in a self-righteous rage because they weren't invited to his wedding. How dare they? There are no words. They deserve no words. They know exactly what they did, and they know exactly why they weren't invited to the wedding. No explanation is needed, and frankly, no contact with them is necessary. Although we may not go as hard as the commenter who suggests that Disown shouldn't bother to piss on them if they were on fire, we're still hoping that Disown and his husband will have a wonderful life together and that he never feels like he owes his family a damn thing. So this was from Cafe Mom. I will put link that description below. Okay, skipping his sister's wedding to go to a gay bar. 
The original poster known as, okay, the original poster posted in Reddit's Am I the Asshole forum, where it received 9,700 upvotes and 1,200 comments. According, okay, I, you know what, uh, MSN always tries to be like, hey, let's put this blurb about this important topic. Nobody cares. Okay, in a title, in a post title, Am I the Asshole for Skipping My Homophobic Sister's Wedding to Go to a Gay Club? The 23-year-old man grew, says he grew up idolizing his older sister, 29. When OP was 14 years old, he came out as gay. He said his sister was supportive of him, but their relationship changed after she met her new, now husband in college. He grew up in a very traditional Christian household, the Post read. They met at a frat mixer at Bama, Alabama. She was in a sorority. He was in a frat. The OP, OP said that despite his sister always being supportive of him, she had always been neutral regarding politics. But after meeting her now husband, she would get visibly uncomfortable if the OP talked about guys. One time when her fiancé was on FaceTime with us, I mentioned a Tinder date with a guy, and she told him I was joking, the post read. We sort of grew apart as we grew older. After moving to California for college, OP said he still called his sister but never spoke about his love life. Although OP did not really know his sister's partner, he says he was happy for her when he proposed. They set the date for a year later. A few months later, I met my current boyfriend of eight months, the post read. Coincidentally, I found out that my boyfriend's birthday was also the day of my sister's wedding. We talked about it in advance and decided to celebrate his birthday on a different day. The last straw was when, o although OP's sister knows about his boyfriend and said he was allowed to bring a date, she seemed somewhat distant during the rehearsal dinner. At one point, I could see her fiancé looking toward my boyfriend and me whispering, they're going to make me and my family so uncomfortable, the post read. After the dinner, OP's sister pulled him aside to say he shouldn't bring his boyfriend to the wedding because it is being held in a traditional church and she wanted things to be a certain way. I was pretty offended, and I asked her why she had a problem with me being gay all of a sudden, the post read. She said it was fine that I was, being, that I was gay, but I shouldn't force it on everyone else. That was the last straw. Yeah, I'm forcing it on everybody by existing. Okay, that's exactly what they mean. They don't want to know that gay people exist because they don't know how the bits work and whatever. It's just dumb as fuck. The OP said his boyfriend was hurt and said that he decided neither of them would attend the wedding. Instead, they would decide to go out to a gay club for his birthday. He texted his sister the morning of the wedding to say he, was no longer, he would no longer be a groomsman because he was not attending. OP said his sister did not reply and they have not spoken since. I feel guilty for missing my sister's wedding, and I know I'm not blameless here. We were close for so long that it hurts regardless of what she said to me. But I felt so invalidated during that rehearsal dinner, so I made a decision. And I can't undo that. Although he thinks he owes her an apology, OP said he deserves an apology from his sister. Is it time to cut her off for a while, or should I be the one to apologize? Reactions. Not the asshole. Your sister and her husband do not accept you and your partner for who you are. Instead, they want you to fit into the picture of what the wedding should look like. They're pretty intolerant and obviously homophobic. Another comment reads, Her comment about you forcing it on everyone else is bonkers. I find it heartbreaking that she allowed this bigoted homophobe and his family to change her views and ruin her relationship with you. A gay club sounds much more fun than a wedding with guests who judge you for whom you love. Another com the last comment here says this. She chose a homophobic man because she's a homophobe. Her don't rub it in people's faces is rich since you're going to a wedding where they're rubbing their heterosexual relationship on everyone there. Hmm. This one, this one is stupid because I hear this all the time. And uh, yeah, that's just, that's just dumb. This is about caretaking. Caretaking is really tough because you want to be there for your family, but also you have your own life to live. And I definitely need to make it clear about expectations I have as, as my family ages because I, yeah, you have to have that conversation. All right.
A mom says it's evil her adult children won't agree to care for their disabled brother, and Reddit is thoroughly freaked out. Let's see. As a mother in Reddit's fame, Am I the Asshole subreddit found out, there are limits to what you can ask of your children and their futures. And the word ask is pretty essential in really allowing them to consent to step up and in into more defined caregiver roles later in their lives. Introducing her three children to our newly adults at 18 and 20, Jay and Jen, who are neurotypical, and Jack, an 11-year-old who has both ADHD and is on the autism spectrum. The original poster said that she got into an argument with her for older children after they sat her down to express issues with the assumption that they would eventually inherit full-time care of their brother, who, according to OP, will never be able to live entirely independently. We made sure that both of our neurotypical kids know that one day they're going to start taking care, they need, they are going to need to start taking care of Jack when the time comes when I and their dad cannot, the poster wrote OP. The Jen has always been neutral, but Jay has always been incredibly obstinate and rude about it. I put it down to being young and having his life ahead of him, but the year he went to college, he made it very clear to me that he will not be taking care of Jake in any way, and since then, I've been arguing about it with him. When her older children tried to address the caregiving issue with her older, oldest son even stepping in to help her older daughter express her, her discomfort, she said they got into a screaming match over the matter. He said very rudely that neither of them will ever be taking care of Jake. He told me that they were not raised to be caretakers and that it's absurd to expect their children to figure out this future issue for them. I truly believe this kind of mindset is selfish and evil. Jake is their brother, their flesh and blood, and he did not ask to need to be taken care of. For them to just abandon him like this is absurd. I'm not telling them to put their lives on hold and be his caretaker. Yes, you are. Only that when the time comes that we can't take care of him, they will need to. She says she hasn't spoken to her older son since. While this OP's feelings of worry for the future and stability of her youngest is understandable, the folks in the subreddit were quick to agree with her children and call her out for, to, for refusing to consider they might lead lives that wouldn't make them an immediate caregiving candidate or emphasize any kind of choices that they might want to make independently. The consensus, the older siblings aren't, by nature of existing in the same family, their brother's keepers. One commenter wrote this, Jack isn't their kid, and it's horrible of you to take their futures away from them like this. Others noted that there are so many ways to be to more openly and less aggressively involve her adult children in family care decisions without forcing roles on them that might be detrimental to everyone's well-being and further relationships. My husband and I will likely be the caretaker of his brother when his parents are no longer able, one poster shared. Why? Because they asked and he said yes. There was no demand and no obligation, and if we choose not to, then that was our right. OP, you done messed up and might not have relationships with your older ch kids anymore. Another commenter writes this, OP really needs to start looking into supportive accommodation. The waiting list can be extremely long, but I've known a lot of people who've lived in supportive living, and they really value the independence that it offers. When I was severely disabled, I was looking, into, I was looking to move into it myself, um, said commenter Octo Husey. Expecting Jack's siblings to take over his care is extremely unreasonable, and I doubt Jack himself would want to constrain that. Research the options available outside of sibling care and discuss it with Jack what he feels most comfortable with. His opinion is the one that matters the most. So, I, I, uh, so this is a lot of times there are many, a lot of, a lot of parents don't they kind of like have this situation when it kind of comes up and I have to admit that that's a lot of families and sometimes like that's how I've done things like when it comes up but these kind of things really have to be hashed out way ahead of time so that people know um, that people have a clear expectation of what's going on I think that OP said she's mom you know and she's so used to dictating everything um, she has to realize that her relationship to her children they're not kids anymore. Her relationship to them has changed and they are equals. They're not, she is always going to be mom, but they are, 
they are more on the footing of equals. Um, especially when you think about the fact that they have their whole life ahead of them and they cannot, like, when the time comes, they she wants to frame this as an issue of preparedness, but she's dictating the terms. And that's not what, that that's not right. So I agree that OP is definitely the asshole here because she's just assuming, this is the, like, I hate when people say that family is there for each other and da da da. Um, sharing the same blood or sharing the same, sharing the same DNA doesn't make you family. But also, um, this is this is a very tough situation because she wants her she wants him to be taken care of, but the way that she went about this was so totally wrong, imposing on her kids or imposing on them rather than allowing them to say, Yes, I want to, or maybe no, I won't. Like she's just dictating it. And that and there that is the way that you entrench opposition. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you soon.